look at that. Oh, this one's squishy. Get rid. The birds can eat that one. We've just stopped at a service station to get some LPG gas, so we're all topped up. Next on the list is to go to Aldi, get some lunch, and do like a general food shop, and then go to our daytime park up where we're going to get some work done before heading to our nighttime park up. Quentin? Hello? What's all that racket outside, eh? Do you know? I didn't end up filming very much yesterday, did I, Quentin? We arrived at our first park up, so we're not anywhere very aesthetically pleasing. We're just in a car park where there's free parking and no one seems to move you on in the night. There's a, a railway line just behind us. There's quite a busy road with traffic, but I slept really well. Did you sleep well? The good thing about this park up is that it's right next to a beach. So we're gonna go walk the dogs. It's a lovely sunny morning. And yeah, that's how we'll start our day. We have arrived at a new park up, um, a bit more of a nature vibe one because uh, we wanted to, we were craving a bit of that. So it's literally just a lay by. It's like a lay by off a quiet road, so it's not too bad. There's like some nice sweet chestnut trees out there, which are one of my favorite trees. So I'm happy with that. And then once we get back from the dog walk, I'm going to start boiling off my row tips that I prepared, trying to make jam in a van. As we were walking back towards the van, I started to see bigger and bigger sweet chestnuts on the floor. Look at this one. I think these are some of the biggest, juiciest sweet chestnuts I've seen in the UK. I've got quite a few big ones, like as big as the ones you'd see in supermarkets. I mean, I do, I have lived in the north of the UK for quite a while. The climate's colder, so maybe they don't grow as big. We're in the south of England right now, and the sweet chestnuts are huge. Whoa! This time of year, there's just, quite an abundance of things that you could forage. I'm not that brave. I would never eat mushrooms that I've foraged because I just don't feel like I know enough and 
the potential to poison yourself really scares me. Can't go wrong with a sweet chestnut. The slight problem that we have, and the reason why making rose hip jam in itself is a bit of a challenge, is because our two burner stove in our van is out of action at the moment. It needs a gas check because apparently some of these are defective potentially so that's a bit dangerous so we've turned off our stove at the valve and we're not going to use it because we don't want any possibility of gas leaking into the van because that could be such a dangerous situation. Instead we have this little camping stove it works fine and we're just using gas canisters i just thought it might be interesting to to see what it's like to cook these the best thing to do with them would be to put them in an oven i wouldn't mind just boiling them like you can steam them in their in their shells and i also saw a quick recipe where you cut them in half raw like this and you peel the shells off and then you cook them in butter in a hot pan and i think we could do that on our camping stove yeah i'm just going to see if i can find any more big ones like this my method for getting them is just to stamp on them and see what comes out oh that one's got a hole in it so it's definitely got worms in it because obviously they're very spiky they look like spiky hedgehogs that one looks quite chunky yeah that one's an all right size I think. really spiny apparently how to um, determine if you've got good ones is obviously like the size and also if they feel um, heavy because when they start to feel lighter that's when they're not good to eat and check for pinholes so you know that worms haven't gone inside and also they should have like a smooth shell rather than looking like they've kind of like buckled and, and shrunken in slightly because then they're not as fresh and good Whilst it is very rainy outside and the weather is reporting that it's only going to get worse today, I thought there's no better time than now to start cooking down my rose hips. Last night we ended up doing more prep to them. So initially I, I trimmed the two ends of the rose hips and that was all I was going to do because what you do is you push the cooked trimmed rose hips through a sieve, but our sieve has a hole in it. I think a lot of seeds would get through. In the end we decided to half the hips and scrape out all the seeds and that probably took about a couple of hours and there was two of us doing it and we've only got this small bowl of rose hips to show for it. So I'm not going to be making very much jam at all, probably like <laughs> that much jam, but that's okay because we live in a van so we don't have like capabilities to store lots of jam anyway. I only wanted to try this recipe out. In other foraging updates we have a bowl of sweet chestnuts. Craig's gone off into uh, town. We've moved to a new park up. Uh, he's gone to get us a beer that he thinks will pair well with uh, chestnuts that we're going to cook and eat tonight. Here are the rose hips. Sorry the lighting is so bad. It's just a very gloomy day today. So I'm going to put them in the pan and cover them with water. And then I'm just going to bring this water to the boil. There we go. Once I'd brought the water to a boil, I cooked the fruit until it was very soft, soft enough to push through a sieve. It took maybe about 15 minutes. Then I lifted the fruit out of the water into the sieve over another pan and I pressed the fruit through the sieve, being sure to scrape all of the smooth mixture from underneath. Once I'd done that, squeezing as much goodness as I could from the hips, I weighed the mixture and then I added a bit more than half of the weight of the hips of sugar to the pan. 
I returned this to the heat and continuously stirred the sugar and the hips for about 20 minutes until the mixture thickened and became much more shiny and luscious looking. Once it had cooled a little bit, I poured it into a jar. I'm not canning this jam as we intend to eat it in about a week's time, so no need to sterilise the jar in this case and we'll store it in the fridge for a week or two. Next. I spent a bit of time preparing the chestnuts. First I rinsed them all and then began cutting a cross in the skin of each one before soaking them in water for at least 20 minutes. It's my time to sit down and relax after that jam making and uh, we just put the, the chestnuts on to boil. We're going to boil them for five minutes and then we're going to cook them in a pan. And whilst Craig is manning the stove, I'm going to uh, do a little drawing in my sketchbook. Sweet chestnut trees are so beautiful. I love the shape of the leaves and the leaves are also usually quite glossy when they're on the tree. Um, so I'm going to draw them in my sketchbook and also look at what the inside of the chestnut casing looks like. It's like velvety and that velvetiness doesn't go away. It just stays like that. So sheeny. So I'm going to make a little arrangement on my desk and then draw from life. That's a good flavour, isn't it? Mm, lovely. Difficult to eat, I will say that. So I'm having quite a cosy evening. Got a little glass of beer, working in my sketchbook, lots of rain on the roof, little pug cuddling on my lap. Mm. Quite nice. Eating seasonal produce. Autumn vibes, locked in. Just made some jam. Don't even need a pumpkin spice latte. <laughs> we have reached the end of the video. So I hope you enjoyed this one. Uh, I thought I would just show you uh, the finished piece in my sketchbook in daylight so you can have a look at it. Um, here it is. All in uh, coloured pencils and also just a, a lead pencil as well. Um, yeah. This morning we had some more of the rose hip jam. I just put it on some fruit toast that I had and it was really nice. Um, the taste of it is, I don't know, it has like a little bit of citrusness to it, a bit of orange flavour. It's very high in vitamin C, so that's probably why it tastes quite citrusy. There is like a little savoury element to it, kind of a bit like carrot maybe, but very sweet carrot. I think it would make a really nice uh, filling for like a sponge cake or something. And speaking of rose hips, um, the reason I wanted to make rose hip jam is because I'm making a series of uh, postcards about foraging and these are going to be available in my Etsy shop and I was thinking about different things that I like to forage in nature and rose hips is definitely up there on my list. So I've made this piece of art. I think I'm going to edit it slightly. I think there might be some writing up here or something and maybe even uh, a watercolour blue backdrop to it as well. I'm going to be making foraging postcards and they'll be available in my shop soon. I'm wondering if I should make one for the sweet chestnuts that we cooked last night. Last few things to say. Thank you to my patrons who have been supporting me for many years and supporting this channel and supporting me getting back onto YouTube and making content here. And also the last thing is if you go into this description underneath this video, you'll find a link to an art auction which is happening. 
raising money for Palestinian medical aid. The organisers are asking for digital donations. If you go onto their profile, you'll find a really helpful post that explains what they want from you. They're aiming to print the artwork for you, so they are wanting files that are suitable for printing and they're going to organise all the printing and I think they're looking at venues as well to show the artwork and hopefully raise a lot of money. Um, in the background to filming this video I've been consuming a lot of content about what's been happening and um, I, I can't say too much because I do want to make sure this video is monetized and I know there's been a lot of suppression of pro-Palestinian sentiments across social media but I wanted to say solidarity with everyone who is calling for an end to the occupation and calling for a ceasefire. My thoughts are with the Palestinian people and also with Israeli citizens who are grieving and who are speaking out against their government's regime. Um, yeah, it's been a very heavy week. I wanted to keep this video light because we all need a little place to have a break and to think about lighter things and yeah that's definitely a privileged position to be in but I also think it's our responsibility to be looking very closely at what's happening because as you as we can see world leaders are not reflecting back the views of their citizens a lot of the time and yeah I've been thinking a lot and learning a lot and listening to a lot of Palestinian voices on the ground in Gaza. Thank you for watching, thank you for listening and let me know what you thought of this video and I'll hopefully see you very soon for another one. Bye!